grace, power, ministry, and love. Incline your ears to wisdom and your hearts to understanding. Receive the word of God according to knowledge. Welcome to preach. To preach. Be a voice, not an echo. Join Minister Chantrell for today's message. Good day, beloved. And to all who are listening today, I want to thank you for joining me. I'm going to begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you first that I'm alive for such a time as this. Father, that I'm alive this day with the will and driving my heart to do your will, Father. And I know that is from you. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads and guides me into all truth. Your Holy Spirit that brings all things to my remembrance, whatever you have seen, what you have heard, Father, and what you have told me. Father, I move forth today in boldness, thanking you for the provisions of your word and life and love and liberty by your spirit. I look to you for all sufficiency this day, Father. I am alive and well in you, and I praise your holy name. I thank you, Father God, for your faithfulness and your goodness towards me. I thank you that you have qualified me and made me fit to be a minister and a dispenser of the gospel of grace. Father, in the name of Jesus, with that authority, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the blood, I come against every principality, every proud argument, every reason, every theory that sets itself against your true knowledge, Father. I bind it in the name of Jesus and by the power of the blood, Father. Thanking you that what I bound on earth is already bound in heaven, and what I loose on earth is already loosed in heaven, Father. I loose your peace, your wisdom, your understanding, standing and the bond of oneness father and love and your wisdom father i pray that every eyes of every spirit is enlightened father by your word by your power father given true understanding of the truth of your word and the truth of your love and the truth of all that our lord and savior jesus has accomplished for us this day i thank you father you are so powerful and you are so worthy of praise. And I lift you up, Father, in the name of Jesus. Not my will, but thy will be done. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in this earth as it is in heaven, Father, according to thy word. I thank you that you look after your word to perform it. You are faithful and you are worthy. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I thank you again for joining me today. Today is Dreams and Visions. Um, I'm going to give this... Uh, from the top of my head as best I can. I did notate, and if I need to revert to reading verbatim, I will. <laughs> because I don't like to leave anything out because I know everything means something. Um, very, God is very, he's very symbolic and he's very precise. You, Everything you see is for a reason, for the most part. I had this dream early a.m. this morning. It was actually, yeah, early a.m., um, and, uh, it was on me heavy and immediate. And I mean, I would like to say this is one of the realest ones I've had, but I can't say that because anyone who's had dreams or visions, they're not like your typical dreams where you, you see things and you kind of in this dream state, it seems unreal and clouded. This is as if your very eyes are open. It is very, 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 very real and very vivid. Um, so I'm going to start with this. I'm just going to go into this dream. Um, and then I'll explain afterwards what the Lord spoke to me concerning it and the scripture, um, that I was given to read with it. And this dream, it started off literally by a boat sinking. I mean, it was a boat that wasn't large. I want to say it's something like a person would take out on a personal, they're just out there having a fun kind of boat, kind of like the size of the boat that the young men were out at sea and they kind of got lost on. So it wasn't a large ship and it wasn't a tiny boat, but it had sank. And this was not done like, you know, where people didn't see it because there were other people up on the beach kind of watching and looking at what was going on. I started out seeing this boat sunk and I was taken under the water deep and I could see, you know, how some of the bodies are kind of floating. Some of them were deceased and I could see this very clearly. And there were some people kicking at the top of the water. I could see the glare on the top of the water and I could tell that in my human body, I began to really hold my breath because I was holding it until I had to let it go. And I breathed. And of course I was breathing underwater and I was unharmed and I breathed. And as I breathed, I was taken to the top. And when I got to the top of the water, I could see that a man had a young uh, middle age. He wasn't too small, wasn't grown, but he was trying to resuscitate him. He had him in his arms while he was trying to resuscitate him. His legs was dangling. At this point, I was moved toward the shore and other people were out on the shore just having a good time. And they could see that this boat had went down. And I don't know why this boat went down, but it had sank. And they were up there talking about why and how this could have happened. And they were just out there enjoying the day. As this began to happen, I was moved forth. I was beginning to be lifted up above the crowd. At this point, 
there was a large wave coming. And I mean, these people were completely clueless. I mean, you could see it topping over like a hill in the distance. And I could hear there's a wave coming. At this point, it's like I heard it, but somehow the people heard it because I didn't say it. And they started to run and panic. And there was, I, I promise you, with this wave and the size of it, there was absolutely nothing that could have been done. And I was ahead because it was like no sirens, no tsunami alerts, no warning whatsoever because people were out there just having a good time uh, off the coast of this beach. And as I was taken up, this wave came in and it just consumed it destroyed everything it touched. And I was moved about above this situation as this wall of water continued to move. Um, for some reason, my sister was there and I couldn't see her, but I could hear her, but I knew she was there and she was taken up with me. And we were looking at this as it happened and we were being moved about above as it went just inland and went inland quite a ways. And as it was going inland, I, the Lord is very specific. I don't know why he was making sure I could see these trees, these pine trees, these particular ponderosa pine trees and another name for it, which I'll, I'll put in the notes that I looked up after the fact, because they were very vivid and he made sure they were right in my face. And I knew I was in California, but I also knew that these trees were somewhere else too. And it was very important that I focused on them because this is something I was get inside my spirit as I was moving. Anyone who, who have had this happen to you, you know what I mean? Because while you're seeing these things, your understanding is being put in your heart simultaneously at some times. And as we moved over these trees, other people began to come out because they heard all this commotion. And as they came out their house to see what was going on, they were taken by these waves. It was very, very destructive. It was very, very violent. Um, very violent movement of this water. After this happened and it continued to move inland, we came to this building and it was as if we were inland enough to be brought down. So the wave wasn't coming in any further. We were in this building and there was someone else in this building. And we began to hear this forecast about this wave that had hit. We began to hear the news broadcast about this wave that had destroyed everything and then about storms simultaneously coming. And I could hear someone in the room say that, you know, I haven't seen anything in the weather. I don't, I don't know what they're talking about. And then as this happened, I felt the building. It was shaped like an octagon. That's the best I could decide. If you like a castle, you know, if you get a part of a building where it's kind of round shaped at the end and the stir the staircases may be spiral, but it almost looked like this castle dome part at the end. It was kind of octagon shaped. And I could feel intense pressure. That's the only way I can describe it. Any of you that's been anywhere near a tornado know what that pressure feels like. Intense pressure. And I could feel this building rotate to the left, to the right, then back to the left. And back to the right. And this is not a building that should have been pivoting. But this the building was pivoting to the left and to the right with this pressure. At that point, I went out. It, this caused me to look out of the window. I looked at one of these massive windows because it was windows all around this building. And immediately I saw a lightning strike. It was a large lightning strike. I mean big. And when that lightning hit on the east, no, it was toward the west. I could see a large tornado when that lightning hit. And then the moment I saw that tornado, oh my God, it's anybody says it's just so real. And it's like, it's like you're really there and it hit and something exploded and this tornado became fire. I mean, straight fire. You couldn't see any, no clouds, no nothing. It was a flame and fire. Then as this came, I immediately looked to the East and there was a tornado of fire, just nothing but fire fire. And the hardest part about this part of the dream was uh, this has never happened where I've gotten taken into the fire. And it, it was, you could feel the heat, but I could tell I was being protected, but it was still intense, intense, intense heat. And this tornado, oh my God, these people were being taken into it. They were being burned alive. And I was taken into this fire and I saw these people being burned. I mean, flesh burned, bubbled up, burned, like you seen someone getting burned alive. It was not covered from me. I saw them getting burnt alive, but I could also tell it was so quick because the heat of the fury was so hot. And I mean, I was taken into the flame and saw people being burned as it overtook them. But yet I was being shielded. I felt the heat, but I was protected. But it was still extremely, uh, yeah, anyone who tells you they would see this and it's not alarming. But at the same time, I knew I was safe. It's very hard to explain. I knew it was safe. And it was, anyone who has listened to my dreams know this is kind of the same thing. I'm protected from these things. And I know it. After this began to happen, 
there was a rim. I was taken to another scene. There was a remnants of people who did not die. They were just wandering around and they were dirty and they looked tired and it was just a mess. And you could tell they had scavenged for things. They had like backpacks and little bags and they just looked so weary. Some people were running and hiding because these buses had came and uh, I think it might have been National Guard. And they were trying to force, some people were being forced to get on the bus and some people were just getting on the bus because they were just tired. They were just going. And and the funny thing about it, strange, I don't know why I remember stuff like this, but they were walking and as they were walking, some people were eating dry cake mix. They, I don't know why this was so, but they had cake mix and they were eating it straight out of the box, like just throwing the cake mix in their mouth, eating just dry cake milk mix because I guess that's all there was. Um, but that's what they were eating on. And all I can remember is I was being moved about while these people were being put on the bus. And some people were hiding. And in my spirit, and it was like at this point I was yelling, don't get on the bus. Don't get on the bus. Please don't get on the bus. Because I knew that where they were really being taken, they were not going to come back. The, and it was not people that were really trying to help them. That they were not coming back and they were not going to get help like they thought they were going to get. And I kept saying, don't get on the bus. Please don't get on the bus. And that was the last thing I was saying before I opened my eyes. And that was the end of the dream. And, you know, as I saw this going on, it was just, I had never seen quite that graphic of death before. You know, I've seen people die. You know, I've seen like when I gave the dream with the angel Michael, where it was some kind of pestilence where their skin bubbled up like they were being boiled and they popped. I mean, that was pretty graphic. Um, but this being taken into the fire, seeing people scream and they were being consumed by this tornado of fire. And in my heart, I know this was the fear of God because this is what he put in my heart. I'm going to read a few scriptures here um, that I was given. Jeremiah verse 4, Jeremiah 4 verse 4, circumcise yourselves to the Lord and remove the foreskins of your heart, men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, or else my wrath will go forth like fire and burn with none to quench it because of the evil of your deeds. Jeremiah 21 and 12, O house of David, thus says the Lord, administer justice every morning, and deliver the person who has been robbed from the power of his oppressor. That my wrath may not go forth like fire and burn with none to extinguish it because of the evil of their deeds. There it is again. Isaiah 9 and 19. By the fury of the Lord of hosts, this land is burned up and the people are like fuel for the fire. No man spares his brother. Then Isaiah 66 and 15. For behold, the Lord will come in fire and his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. And then I have Ezekiel 22 and 31. Thus I have poured out my indignation on them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their way for their way I have brought up on their heads, declares the Lord. And then I'm going to finish off with Act 2 and 17. And it shall come to pass that in the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And upon my handmaiden, on those days I will pour out of my spirit. And this is also repeated in Joel, 20, Joel 2, 28 through 29. And the Lord wanted me to read those scriptures because we are following the very pattern. The America is following the very pattern that the children of Israel did. And it's going to come to the same destruction. He is not a respecter of persons. The same actions get the same results. The fury of God and the destruction of America and the judgment that has begun. This is what the Lord gave me to stay in a dream. Um, and it is urgent. I mean, oh my God, it's urgent. I mean, the, the amount of death. And no one wants to see anyone die that way. But this just is more affirmation of other dreams he's given me where I've seen entire cities burned. Entire cities were burned and blazed up. And some with volcanic lava and ash. And uh, many with, uh, I don't, I'm not sure how some of the other fires started, but many cities being burned. And this is just another one. I want you guys to stay tuned because I have pages of dreams. And in my heart, I know it's time to where he's going to have me release many of them. Some of them I've had for years, and it was not the season of release. But now the season of release uh, is upon us. I'm 100% sure of this. Uh, take these dreams, as always, to the Lord um, and pray. For those of you who have not given your heart to him, I pray that you will this day. Go to my channel. I have a dream uh, shall I say a video of salvation where you can just listen to it and repeat it word for word with your whole heart, surrender to him. 
um, that you may be saved before it is too late. Um, I just pray, I urge you by the mercies of God to give your life to him this day. Again, I thank you for joining me today. Stay tuned for the messages that are to follow. God bless you and grace be with you all. Thank you for joining us today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.